Now, the amount of ink held in the tube and the reservoir in the tube is going to vary depending on the actual type, size of the tube, the shape of the tube, also the needle grouping and the type of ink you're using. So, you know, various different setups are going to allow you uh, various different amounts of time you can actually spend on the skin tattooing. Um, generally speaking, you have, you know, about a few seconds worth of ink or that translates into, you know, a few inches worth of line work that you can actually use, that you can do before you actually have to dip again. Now also, each spot that you're working on, or each line segment, you want to try to pull the majority of the line segment. If you can pull the whole entire segment of line in the first time, it's the most ideal because if you have to try to line up the line and go over it twice, it's a little more difficult and it's a little tricky to line it up and get it straight the second time around. So it's always best to try to pull the line as long as you possibly can the first time and get it all done in one shot. Now also, as you see, there's, you know, any, any imperfections or little deviations or blemishes whatsoever in the skin um, don't really worry about those you just kind of want to go over any parts of the skin that have any imperfections in them just like you normally would um, uh, although there is you know obviously a possibility that it might have a little holiday a little light spot when it heals up if you're tattooing over skin that's already damaged, it tends to heal a little lighter than fresh, clean skin. But again, it's just pretend like it's not there and just tattoo normally. Just try to ignore it. And again, every so often, every few minutes or so, you want to just go ahead and check. Um, again, like I showed before in the last segment, is just push down on the needle bar and clean the tip of the needle out just to make sure there's no uh, little bits of paper towel or dried up ink or little bits of skin or whatever stuck in the tip to impede the flow of ink coming out of there. Um, even if it is flowing correctly, it's always good to just periodically do that by default just to make sure you have a clean, <coughs> clean flow of ink coming out of there. With this particular piece, there is quite a bit of detail involved in it. And what I did with the stencil is I got the majority um, of all the negative space filled in with the general shapes that I'm using. You know, I have gears in various places, um, wires, uh, screws, and whatnot. Um, but there is certain details, little parts that I want to add in there that I did leave out. And I did that on purpose because you don't want to cluster your stencil up too much. What happens if you have too many lines on your stencil and then you start to lose them on there, it ends up making a big mess and it's very hard to keep track of what's going on. So generally speaking, you want to keep it, keep the stencil very, very readable and very easy to follow. And 
you know, the subtle, smaller things, the little detailed bits and pieces in there. Um, it's very easy just to add in afterwards after you have the initial outline of everything all done and you have a nice clean base to work from and you know once it's on there it's not going to rub off so you can kind of play around with it and take your time and figure out exactly what you want and where you want it at.